Hello there guys, welcome to one of my live videos and today I'm just be officially um, updating you on some more uh, latest uh, news so if you do consider drop your likes and if you do consider a subscriber to the channel um, as always um, so um, I've, as I have been um, updating you um, on a regular uh, basis uh, from my um, own uh, perception um, I do believe you know we need to see um, a variety um, of changes um, at Manchester United you know if we are to be back uh, to being um, a competitive elite uh, level uh, football club and um, also uh, next year it's very um, essential that we do uh, get uh, the right uh, cal calibre players uh, to uh, Manchester United and like I did say I think we need at least five to six more signings maybe even more if we are to be back you know to um, how we uh, want to be and if we are you know to be a uh, future uh, title uh, contenders so um, I do believe you know we need to get rid of um, our uh, current uh, board because I think you know the board um, have been um, a liability uh, for uh, several years obviously you know affecting them um, on their poor uh, recruitment also you know uh, their uh, poor uh, selection um, of managers and uh you know um and they didn't uh, back um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer enough, you know, uh, during uh, the course um, in the summer. So I think we need to get rid of our current board and recommend a new board in. Uh, the question is, you know, can this current board um, assure uh, structural changes at Manchester United? Are, and are, are they going to back Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in the next uh, couple of uh, windows? Because I do definitely, well, I can actually assure that Solskjaer, you know, will be here at least um, until January. Probably, more than likely, he'll be here uh, for uh, this season. But one thing I can definitely assure that he will not see um, out um, his three year uh, contract term at Manchester United because when Solskjaer had been uh, given her uh, the job uh, permanently, you know, he had uh, signed them um, three year uh, contract. Um, I think we also need to get rid of Ed Woodward, um, he's compatible to the board because he's also been um, a liability uh, for uh, several years um, um, as Ed Woodward and he's not uh, reliable uh, to um, oversee um, our transfer business. Um, obviously, Ed Woodward uh, recently you now has uh, you know, suggested out that he 100% is insisting that he's back in Oligan and Solskjaer and he's actually you know given uh, Solskjaer the sat verdict you know he's you know he's, he's assured uh, that you know Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's uh, job um, is safe um and yes, yeah, so I think he definitely you know where needs to uh, go. Um, I still think there's qu there's quite a lot of players at Manchester United now that are no longer good enough uh, to represent the football club. So I think we need to orchestrate on getting uh, rid of uh, more uh, players there uh, next year. I think we probably need to get rid of another f to get rid um, of we need to get rid of about four or five uh, more uh, players. Um, I know that obviously a lot of players uh, have left there uh, since uh, Mulligan and Solskjaer's uh, arrival. I think Solskjaer's been told that he needs to sell around uh, five um, or six uh, players uh, next year. Um, and I think. Also, Solskjaer you know, needs to uh, leave uh, the football club because I just don't think he's the right man, you know, to um, elevate uh, Manchester United forward. Uh, so we need to see a variety um, of changes um, at the football club. Um, you could probably say, you know, that the coaching staff um, are obviously you nowhere know, not uh, good enough. Uh, my perceptions haven't even changed, you know, regarding Solskjaer, even though you know we did beat Partizan Belgrade uh, by uh, three goals to nil um, in the Europa League, and you know that was a very, very um, uh, that was a very, very good result because now you know we have progressed um, into the knockout stage. Um, of the Europa League and I think you know like I said you know that's uh, the only route uh, to where uh, the Champions League is uh, you know progressing in the Europa League because I've actually you know, now uh, fully uh, disregarded uh, the top four uh, you know we are 10th uh, in the league um, at this uh, present uh, time we are 10 points uh, behind top top four we are around just three or four points um, above uh, relegation uh, so I've actually fully uh, disregarded uh, that top four but like I did mention um, at the start of this season that our expectations this season you know will be to finish in that top four so in that aspect uh, we can uh, get back um, into the uh, Champions League um and I did say if we could get the top four, you know, it would go give us something to build on, and then obviously, you know, it would uh, create um, a platform and that. Uh, but we're not going to get uh, the top four uh, this season. I can definitely you know um, assure uh, that. You know, obviously, it's still a possibility because he's still a long way uh, to go um, in the season. You know, we are eleven games um, into the Premier League season um, at the moment. Um, you know, we've only won three games um, out of our opening um, eleven uh, Premier League games, and this is why obviously, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, is under um, in intense uh, pressure um, at the football club. Um, but yeah, you know, it was a very, very good performance um, against uh, Pies in Belgrade uh, the other night. Um, I think, you know, it's uh, analysing it, it's the best performance I've seen um, at Old Trafford, you know, uh, for quite uh, some time. I actually thought it was a better performance, you know, that was showed against Pies in Belgrade than, you know, the actual Chelsea game on the opening day of the Premier League season, even though we did beat Chelsea by uh, four goals to nil. But in that particular game, it was actually Chelsea, you know, that played the expansive football, you know, the press them high up the pitch. So in some aspects of that game, you could say we was actually, you know, luckier to win uh, that game uh, by uh, four goals uh, to nil. <laughs>
but very, very impressed with the Pies in Belgrade game. You know, a good team performance. You know, we also uh, created them um, a lot of uh, chances in the game. You know, we obviously full-backs, you know, bombarded forward. You know, we looked very, very good in the midfield. And it actually, you know, could have uh, been uh, more than 3-0. Um, but, yeah, it was um, a very, very um, good uh, performance. And, you know, for the vast majority of this season, you know, that's been an element of concern, you know, creating uh, chances, you know, because in a lot of games this season, you know, we have been uh, struggling here uh, to create uh, chances. And this, obviously, you know, is the explanation why, you know, we haven't uh, been uh, scoring um, enough uh, goals. Um and in that aspect, you know, it does replicate last season because, you know, last season uh, we didn't uh, score um, enough uh, goals. I think we only scored uh, 53 goals um, in the Premier League, you know, uh, last season. But we still um, um, are um, aware, you know, that obviously, you know, these deficiencies um, in the squad uh, that uh, do uh, need to be um, addressed uh, next year. Um, obviously, you know, we need to get a couple of midfielders in, you know, because we are missing... Uh, in creative impetus in that midfield you know we do need to recruit a replacement uh, for um, Andrew um, Rara uh, we also uh, need um, at least one striker you know we need someone to come in that can assure us goals and someone you know who can be more effective in the box and probably someone you know who can uh, create uh, more chances because we do look very exposed in that attacking line you know following the departures um, of Ronald Lukaku um, and Lexi Sanchez um, like I said though Mar Martial obviously adds a bit more of inspiration in that um, attack of uh, third um, in the pitch because I think you know you know, he's done really, really well uh, since um, he has uh, regained uh, full uh, fitness. Uh, but we need to add more experience um, in that um, attack of our line. Uh, my, for my perception, I think I think we'll do the vast majority of our transfer business next summer. Um, you know, we'll probably look to sign at least one player in January. Or we'll look to get at least a couple of. Uh, well, we'll look to sign one or two players in January. But obviously, over the course of the next couple of windows, at least uh, my recruitment um, has definitely now got to um, improve because our recruitment hasn't only been poor recently; um, it has uh, been uh, poor. Uh, for uh, several years, but I think Solskjaer's got element of concerns, and he says he's actually pessimistic um, about um, our January signings. He obviously, it is you know due uh, to our um, inconsistency, you know, because we are in we are enjoying our worst start to a Premier League season uh, for uh, three uh, decades. Um, but yeah, you know, um, he has uh, got uh, that um, element um, of concern. Um, but um, like I said, you know, I've been very, very impressed, you know, with Marshall and Rashford recently. You know, Rashford um, has rejuvenated himself, uh, you know, uh, recently. I know I've criticised Marcus Rashford uh, for the vast uh, majority um, of this season uh, because he hasn't performed to the standards um, as we should um, expect of him. But to be fair, recently, you know, he has uh, really uh, stepped up to the plate. Rashford, of course, now has scored 53 goals for the football club in all competitions since he broke into the senior squad uh, back in uh, 2016. Uh, but even during his long... Uh, uh, bad spell. I still said at that point, Rashford is uh, the long-term uh, solution uh, for uh, Manchester United. But I've been uh, very, very, um, in, you know, impressed with him uh, recently. You know, scored a good goal um, in the 3 one against Pires and Belgrade. Also uh, provided him um, an assist. Um, Anthony Martial, he's actually, you know, compatible to Rashford in some aspects. You know, obviously they scored the same amount of goals now um, at the club. Um, obviously, you know, they both can play play in the same positions. But obviously, you know, at the start of the season, Martial um, had been uh, giving her that uh, number Niners shirt, uh, but yeah, uh, Martial um, had got his uh, he scored in the Pies and Belgrade game. He obviously scored in the reverse fixture away at Pies and Belgrade. I think he scored like three uh, goals uh, since um, his recovery uh, from injury. Uh, but Martial now is into his uh, fifth season um, as a Manchester United player. Um, you know, and he's a really, really good player. And I think he will uh, succeed um, as a Manchester United player. Maybe there's still some aspects of his game that I do need to improve. You know, I've got the same perception um, on Rashford, but I do believe they can become uh, successes. Um, at the football club, so they've been uh, very, very um, impressive. Um... Uh, regarding uh, Mason Greenwood, now um, I definitely can assure you know he will be uh, become um, a success um, at the football club. Uh, Mason Greenwood, um, as you all know, uh, yesterday um, on one of my videos, um, I, I interpreted you know some of the stuff um, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer had mentioned um, during his press conference. You know, uh, building up to the game um, against uh, Brighton uh, tomorrow. Um, <laughs> Obviously, it's our 12th uh, game of the Premier League season. But during the press conference, um, he actually you know, praised uh, Mason Greenwood. You know, he did say um, he's still learning the men's game. He did basically say that he's learning the men's game. And um, he also said that he believes he'll um, have um, a good uh, career uh, with Manchester United. And he did quote out uh, that uh, Mason Greenwood's finishing um, is similar uh, to uh, Robin uh, Van Persie. You know, there is question marks around Solskjaer. You know, why is it... Why is he not playing Mason Greenwood, uh, you know, on a regular basis? You know, why is he not yet started a game from uh, the start um, in the Premier League? But he did praise Mason Greenwood, you know, uh, throughout um, his press conference. And, um, you know, 
he's obviously an option for the right hand side, but you can also, you know, play him um, in that number nine, you know, Greenwood. Um, he's um, only uh, 18 uh, years of age. He turned 18 years of age um, at the beginning uh, at the beginning um, of last month. So I said, you know, by the time he's 23, 24 years of age, you know, he will become um, a success um, at Manchester United. Or, well, he'll be a world-class player um, in my own, own uh, perception. Um Obviously, throughout uh, the press conference as well, uh, Solskjaer obviously admitted, you know, that you know our league form uh, does uh, need to um, improve because we've only won three league games so far this season. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, we've won uh, more games um, in the cup, you know, than we have um, in the league. You know, some people believe now actually that the Premier League's not a priority. Some people believe now that uh, you know maybe the Carabao Cup or the Europa League is more um, essential, you know, uh, than the um, actual league. But I still think you know the Premier League um, is definitely no um, a priority. Um, he also uh, confirmed that obviously he had arrested uh, Daniel James um, on Thursday. Um, he arrested Daniel James um, on Thursday. Did um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, but probably you know could uh, play uh, tomorrow um, against uh, Brighton because uh, Solskjaer, um, I think, is concerned about um, Daniel James. Daniel James's uh, fatigue um, at Manchester United because Solskjaer um, is aware that he has uh, been um, over uh, playing him. You know, Daniel James this season has played. He's played uh, eighteen games uh, for you know club um, and country. Obviously, he's been played about. 15 uh, games uh, for uh, Manchester United and I think he's played around 895 minutes um, of Premier League uh, football so he has been consistently playing uh, this season but you know he has uh, done uh, really really good as Daniel James and you know don't get me wrong maybe there's some you know there's some aspects of his game you know that he does uh, need to um, improve on maybe his crossing needs to improve you know maybe his finishing uh, does need to improve and he can still you know, class classify that, you know, he's still a prospect and he needs uh, time uh, to develop. You know, he is um, only uh, 21 uh, years of age, but, you know, he's been fantastic for Manchester United and he's enjoyed a fantastic, you know, season so far, you know, uh, with uh, Manchester United um, as Daniel James. And, you know, we only paid around, was it, £18 million for him, but, you know, reflects on his performances, you know, his valuation uh, will uh, persistently uh, grow. Um so, yeah, so I've also been very, very impressed with him. But, the, like I said to you, you know, there's some aspects of me, you know, that I do uh, credit uh, Molly Gunnar Solskjaer anyway. You know, he did, um, you know, recommend three good players to the squad during the summer. You know, obviously, we spent uh, nearly £150 million on, you know, James, Pesaka and Harry Maguire. And, like I said, they've all enjoyed a uh, fantastic start to their uh, Man United uh, careers. You know, I think Anwan Pesaka has also done really, really well. Um, you know, a lot of people believe he's been our most consistent signing, and I do believe he can be our fullback for the next uh, decade. You could say Harry Maguire um, has addressed um, our uh, defensive uh, deficiencies. Um, I do agree on the aspects that Man United did um, overpay for Harry Maguire, you know, because we paid uh, £80 million for him. Um, obviously, he's uh, the most expensive defender in the world, he's the second uh, most expensive uh, signing um, at the football club. Um, <laughs> But, you know, um, he has uh, done uh, really, really well. Um, you know, but we'll have to look to address, you know, more of the problematic areas next year. We'll, we won't we'll address all the problematic areas in January, but over the course of the next couple of windows, you know, we should um, address, um, you know, um, all uh, the problematic areas. But I think Solskjaer anywhere has been assured, you know, that he will be uh, giving uh, money uh, to spend um, in January. Um, but, yeah, definitely um, a massive uh, rebuild um, is needed um, at the football club. But analysing the majority of this team um, anywhere, um, it isn't Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, guys. You know, the vast majority of this team is Jose Mourinho's because, you know, Jose Mourinho, you know, did uh, recommend um, 11 uh, players into the football club and that. And now, obviously, you know, uh, Solskjaer um, is still um, inheriting uh, the vast uh, majority um, of them. Um, but, um, yeah, but like I said, anyway, you know, we've got a lot of young players in the squad, you know, that are developing and trying to improve. You know, some Manchester United fans um, are urging for us, you know, to start uh, James Garner uh, tomorrow against Brighton. Uh, James Garner obviously came on in the 3-0 win against Pires and Belgrade. He made his full debut for the, you know, club um, in the 1-0 away win um, at Pires and uh, Belgrade um, and did uh, really, really well. Um, so I think he'll, earn more, he'll keep earning more first-team promotions there, uh, will James Garner, because I think he's done well in the games he's played in. Um, uh, Brandon Williams, you know, I think he could be an option uh, for this game against Brighton. I think he could play tomorrow, Brandon Williams. Um, I think he's played around uh, three games uh, so far uh, this season. And, you know, he's only 19 years um, of age. Um, I thought he was the man of the match. Um, he was uh, the man of the match um, in our um, last uh, league game um, against, um, you know, Bournemouth. Um, well, he didn't even start the game, you know, he came on uh, with just uh, 10 uh, minutes uh, to go. But I think a lot of people do now believe that Brandon Williams, you know, um, 
is um, a better uh, solution than Luke Shaw, you know, despite the fact, you know, that Luke Shaw um, is our uh, first choice uh, left back. Um, but yeah, he has uh, done uh, really, really well. Um, <coughs> you know, and yeah, so we have still uh, got um, a lot of um, injuries, um, as you um, all uh, know. Uh, obviously, you know, some players um, have uh, recovered uh, from injury, but, you know, there's still players out now uh, with injury. And obviously, reflecting on the amount of injuries we've had this season anyway, uh, Solskjaer um, has had to uh, make um, alterations um, in his squad. Um, you know, Solskjaer's obviously, you know, tried um, a few uh, different elements, um, as you all know. He's, you know, like, tried you know, tried um, different formations. Obviously, he's tried, you know, putting players in uh, other certain positions and that. And, you know, he has tried a few uh, different um, elements. And obviously, we know for the vast majority of this season that Solskjaer um, has been going out with that 4 2 3 1 formation. Obviously, we do know for the vast majority of this season that that 4 2 3 1 formation um, hasn't uh, been uh, working out. Um, I've got to say, um, I think we looked uh, better uh, with three um, at the back. Um, you know, obviously in that four game period, um, obviously prior to the one 0 defeat uh, to uh, Bournemouth, um, you know we showed them a lot of uh, tactical flexibility, and you know I did uh, credit uh, Molly and Solskjaer uh, for that because you know we went uh, with we have, I think we went with the three four one two or the three five two, and you know we looked uh, very very good um, in that in them uh, formations. Um, Solskjaer himself, you know, give his overarching view on that formation. He said, obviously, it's a good formation because it enables us, you know, to stick with two um, up top. But now, obviously, he's uh, reverted uh, back uh, to the 4 2 3 1. But, you know, obviously, for the vast majority of this season, anyway, I have, you know, been critting Oleg I have been criticising Oleg and Solskjaer anyway, you know, because he's been tactically naive for most of this season obviously you know some of his substitutions have been questionable obviously you know the question is you know why does he keep uh, playing um, Ashley Young um, on a regular uh, basis because Ashley Young is uh, one of the problematic uh, players um, at the football club and you know you can say he's past his sell by date you know he's 34 you know he does uh, turn uh, 35 uh, next year I think at some point but Young's been a long serving uh, player um, at the football club you know he has a uh, you know, been here now uh, eight years. You know, he's now into his ninth season as a Manchester United player. Um, I think he has made over 300 other appearances uh, for uh, the club uh, in all competitions. Um, but, um, yeah, I think it was a bad mistake for Man United uh, last season, uh, giving him uh, that uh, new one-year um, extension. Um, you know, giving him uh, that uh, new one-year um, extension. Um but yeah, there is question marks um, around that. But um, like I said, uh, we've got um, a lot of um, injuries still. Um, Solskjaer did provide some team news, you know, yesterday, you know, throughout um, his press conference. Um, I think that Tom Way um, is um, a doubt uh, for this game, um, according to recent parts of the Brighton game, because he um, he came off um, injured, did Tom Way, in the 3 0 win um, against the Pies in Belgrade. And, you know, Tom Way um, has done uh, really, really well for Manchester United this season. You know, don't get me wrong, you know, he isn't a world class midfielder, and I don't know if he's uh, the long term uh, solution for Man United, but he has deserve to keep um, his place um, in the team, you know, reflecting um, on his impressive uh, performances, you know, this season um, at Tom Way, you know, he's played between the lines well, defence, he's showed a lot, of, his defensive contributions also have been very, very good, and I've got the same perception on Fred of what I've got of Matt Tommy where, you know, Fred, you know, we've seen glimpses, you know, of how good, you know, he can be uh, this season. Uh, from my overarching view, I think Fred is a better solution uh, than Matic. Um, some people will believe that Matic is a better, um, you know, solution uh, than Fred. Uh, but, you know, Fred, um, I still think he needs more time at the football club. You know, he's only been here uh, since uh, last summer. Um, obviously, I'd, again, we overpaid for him, you know, we paid just under £50 million pounds him from Shatsa and Neska last summer, um, you know, because well, obviously, we're known anyway, you know, for overpaying for our players in, you know, recent years, um, obviously, you know, a lot of money's been invested into the football club in the last uh, six, um, and, or, six or seven years, in, obviously, in all the man jail eras uh, since uh, the Ferguson um, era, um, but yeah, um, He's done uh, well uh, quite uh, recently, and I think he's blended in very, very well alongside um, Tom Way um, in our uh, midfield. Um, obviously, we know Paul Pogba's out. Um, Solskjaer did confirm, well, he confirmed not too long ago that Paul Pogba um, is not expected uh, back um, until uh, December because uh, Solskjaer um, had confirmed uh, the extent um, of Paul Pogba's injury. Um, so he will definitely won't be in action uh, tomorrow. And he has uh, been um, a big uh, miss um, in that uh, midfield. And I know some people believe that we seem to look uh, better uh, without uh, Paul Pogba. But, you know, we mainly see, we mainly we have seen glimpses of how good Paul Pogba can be. You know, mainly saw the best um, of Paul Pogba in that three-month period uh, when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer uh, was uh, the 
speaking to him, a manager. Um, you know, he hasn't mainly replicated at Man United, you know, what he did do at Juventus because he had uh, four uh, good uh, years um, in Turin. Uh, but I still probably believe anywhere that Paul Pobino wants him um, out um, in the football club uh, next year, like he did do uh, for the entirety um, of the summer. Um, so he's uh, definitely out, and Solskjaer did confirm anywhere he's not too long ago that you know uh, that Fred uh, will uh, fulfil uh, Paul Pobber's uh, position. Um, Harry Maguire uh, had reportedly uh, sustained um, a knock in the three 0 win um, against their uh, parties in uh, Belgrade. Um, I think you know Solskjaer did reveal reveal though that Harry Maguire uh, will be um, okay. So the knock um, that he had sustained, you know, must have not uh, been uh, that as severe. So that's good news. Uh, Lindelof now he missed uh, the game um, against their uh, parties in Belgrade. A bit to Lindelof. Um, you know, he's obviously he sustained a knock in the two one uh, win against Chelsea in the Carabao Cup. Um, I don't know how severe the injury is, but I think Solskjaer's hopeful that Lindelof and Maguire you know, can, you know, be available uh, for uh, tomorrow. Um, we know obviously that Solskjaer confirmed that Shaw, uh, Luke Shaw, Alex Tuanzebe and Matic is confirmed, you know, they should be uh, back um, after the international break. So we do expect after the international break more players, you know, to be uh, back uh, from um, injury. You know, Luke Shaw's out with a hamstring injury. Um, he hasn't played uh, since uh, the 2-1 home defeat uh, to Crystal Palace. Matic has obviously been out of a minor problem. Again, like I said, Matic is one of the problematic uh, players um, at the football club. And Tuan Zebiem has been um, out uh, with a hip injury. Um, and I think he's another one of the young upcoming players that will become um, a success um, at Manchester United. Obviously, Diego De Lott, um has, had, has sustained quite a few injuries this season. Um, he's one of our backup options um, at that uh, right-back uh, position. Um but obviously, I do presume he'll get uh, more um, opportunities, you know, when he does uh, regain uh, full fitness. But I think it's unknown when he will be back in contention. You know, is there a chance he could be involved um, in this game? Um, obviously, Eric Bay's out uh, with injury. Um, he's out until the end of the year with an knee injury. Um, obviously, you know, Fossil Mensu um, is out. Uh, as I confirmed yesterday to you guys, um, Ash Young won't be playing in this game tomorrow because he's uh, currently uh, suspended. Uh, because he uh, received, received his uh, fifth uh, booking in the 1-0 defeat uh, to uh, Bournemouth, so he will not be uh, playing. So I think, you know, Solskjaer, you know, could maybe, you know, put Rojo, Rojo um, either right back or left back, and he actually, you know, could put Brandon Williams on each, on each flank. So he could go, his full backs could be out, he could, could be Brandon Williams and Rojo, or he could go Brandon Williams or, or, Brandon Williams or Wam Saka, or, you know, um, vice versa. But, you know, he will make um, a lot of um, alterations in the squad, I think, from the 3-0 uh, win um, against their parties in uh, Belgrade. Um, but, um, yeah, um, but there is still certain players, you know, that I do uh, really need to uh, step up to the plate. You know, I think, you know, Jesse Lingard um, is definitely you know, one of them players uh, that does uh, need to step up to the plate. You know, Jesse Lingard um, has been uh, very, very poor uh, this season. Some people believe now we need to get consider getting rid of him. I still say it's a long-term solution for Man United, but I said, you know, reflect on Jesse Lingard's status and that of the football club, you know, he should be uh, putting uh, much more uh, better uh, performances out. Um, you know, you got some people saying that, Maybe we should start playing one matter on more. Uh, we should start playing one matter more regularly now. Um, in the Premier League, uh, because I, I thought he actually put a good performance out um, against their uh, parties in Belgrade. I think uh, the vast majority of Man United fans do believe that that number ten role isn't is it doesn't doesn't suit him basically. You know, he seems to be probably you know more um, effective um, on the right hand side. There uh, does one matter, but obviously now we know he's no longer a uh, first choice um, anywhere. Um, he's matter. Uh, probably, you know, because he's lost that yard of pace, you know, effect on his age as well. You know, he's around uh, 31 uh, years and revered, um, is one matter. Um, but for me, he just doesn't uh, get him um, in the team um, enough. So do you think, you know, we should start giving him more opportunities? You know, he did sign um, a new long-term, you know, a new contract uh, during uh, the course um, in the summer. Um, but yeah, um, but yeah, I think we should beat Brighton at home. You know, Brighton are not really that good, but they are uh, sitting um, currently at eighth um, in the league um, at the moment. You know, they are um, on fifteen points, so they are two points um, above us. Um, you know, we beat them at home last season by two goals to one. They've actually beaten us in the last. They've beat uh, beat us um, in their last two home games of Brighton. You know, they beat us. 3-2 last season at the Amex, to beat as 1-0 uh, the season there uh, before. Uh, so, you know, basically, you know, um, anything uh, can happen. But this is a game, you know, Manchester United, you know, uh, should uh, definitely uh, win. Um, we have to basically, you know, win the game, you know, obviously try and keep uh, our hopes up uh, for that, that uh, top four. But I'm surprised, you know, that, you know, with the actual position, you know, that we're uh, currently um, in. Uh, I'm very, very surprised about, you know, to be quite um, honest with you. Um, you know, because I did... 
expect uh, at the start of this season, you know, for us to enjoy a better season this season than what we saw last season because, you know, last season was a huge disappointment, you know, we finished sixth. Obviously, you know, we failed to win in the where uh, and uh, we failed uh, to qualify uh, for the Champions League. Um, so I was uh, very, very um, surprised. But, uh, you know, I did also expect this season... Uh, despite, you know, the three signings that we did uh, recommend into the football club, you know, I expect us this season not to win the league or uh, mount uh, many a uh, kind um, of title challenge up because obviously analysing our squad um, at the moment, you know, it isn't uh, good enough, you know, uh, to currently uh, win uh, the league. Um, you know, it's obviously a long process, you know, it's going to, you know, take an, a number of years, you know, for us to get, get us back to where I want to be. And I did say in the next couple of seasons, uh, my aspirations uh, will be uh, that, uh, you know, top four. Um, but um yeah, but you know I did not expect Manchester United to be tenth. You know now you know after um eleven uh, games um into the uh, Premier League season, we've only registered thirteen points uh, from a possible uh, thirty three. Um, so you know that's a uh, really really um bad. But you know you can say at the moment you know we are actually you know facing them a relegation battle. Um. You know, like I said to you, you know, to me, Solskjaer just isn't the right man for Manchester United. Obviously, he thinks he's the right man to elevate Man United forward. You know, obviously, Solskjaer, um, you know, Solskjaer has actually, you know, um, um, he's um, said that um, he's challenged Man United, basically, you know, to uh, replicate, you know, what replicate the attacking form, you know, that we did, um, you know, show against their parties in Belgrade. So what he's saying is we need to do that on a regular basis. Obviously, things um, are uh, going to uh, turn um, around um, at the football club. Um, but he's still getting backed. Um, like I said, Solskjaer hasn't been here that long, really. You know, overall, he's only been at the football club uh, for um, around um, 11 months. So overall, he's been here just um, under um, a year, you know, including the time, you know, um, when he was the interim manager for, you know, three months. But, you know, he's been permanent manager at Man United now for around um, eight months. And we know for the vast majority of that eight months, um, it has um, all uh, gone uh, wrong, uh, basically, you know, prior to uh, that uh, four-game uh, period, you know, when we did, you know, get a good point off Liverpool at home, you know, we're the only team this season to take any points from Liverpool in the league, you know, we got a good, uh, you know, away win at Norwich, winning by three goals uh, to one, arguably the best performance in the Premier League this season, got a good result um, against Paz and Belgrade away, you know, we got um, a good result against Chelsea in the Carabao Cup um, away, so it looks, uh, looks like in that four-game period, you know, we was obviously, you know, um, on uh, the comeback, um, but um yeah, but um some people are saying, you know, we should still give Ole Gunnar Solskjaer at least a couple more windows, you know, to see who else obviously um he can't uh, recommend in uh, to the football club. Uh, but I think the vast majority of Man United fans now do uh, want him out. Uh, but it all went well, you know, when he was the interim manager, you know, in that uh, three month uh, period, you know, the results were good, the performances were good, um, he got uh, the best um, out of these uh, group um, of players, did Solskjaer, and he exceeded um, expectations, but uh, for the vast majority of these eight months, it's totally comparison to what I saw, you know, when Solskjaer uh, was uh, the interim uh, manager, and uh, like I said, I just don't think he's got any intuition on how to uh, manage um, a big uh, football club uh, like uh, Manchester United, you know, despite the fact that, you know, he knows uh, the traditions um, in that end of the football club because he was a great long-serving player for Manchester United for 11 years. Um, he flourished um, under um, Alex Ferguson's uh, guidance. Um, he was a great long-serving player uh, for um, 11 uh, years and he has actually, you know, got that uh, proven uh, pedigree um, as a player but just hasn't really um, got it um, as a manager, really. You know, obviously, before he came to Man United, he was at Mould. Obviously, before he was at Mould, um, he had um, a really uh, short uh, tenure uh, with Cardiff and, you know, obviously, um, you know, he only managed around, what, 29 or 30 uh, games uh, for uh, Cardiff um, because he got sacked from Cardiff because, obviously, you know, he ended up uh, getting uh, them relegated. And, you know, some Man United fans do, you know, fear that he could replicate Man United, you know, what he uh, did uh, do uh, with Cardiff. But, you know, we won't get relegated, you know, like I said, because, you know, these obviously were the teams and us at this moment in time. Plus, there's too much money into the club. And, uh, obviously, you know, uh, the clubs are too uh, big. So, uh, you know, I don't uh, really uh, see uh, that um, happening uh I think we'll probably finish around maybe 7th or 8th this season. That's where I think Man United uh, will finish. Um, but to me, just um, isn't uh, the right man for Manchester United. Maybe some Man United fans' perceptions did change, reflect on the 3-0 win against Partizan in Belgrade um, regarding Solskjaer and that. But, you know, it doesn't change my perception because Partizan in Belgrade aren't that good um, anywhere. And obviously, you know, it was a game, you know, we you know we were, we were um, expected her to win. But, you know... We've actually been, it's been, this season we've been struggling against small opposition, you know, and slower opposition, you know. 
every t- we've lost four games in the league this season, you know, to low opposition. You know, we lost to uh, Crystal Palace at home. Obviously, you know, we shouldn't have uh, lost uh, to Crystal Palace um, at home. It's actually the first time we've lost to them in Premier League history. You know, we lost to, um, you know, uh, West Ham away. You know, we lost to Newcastle away before the international break. That was another abysmal performance. And lost to Bournemouth uh, quite uh, recently. And that was another game, you know, Man United uh, shouldn't um, have lost. And, you know, we've, there's games this season where we arguably should have won where we've actually performed well, but we just haven't been clinical enough. You know, I think we should have beat Palace at home. We should have won at Southampton away. We should have won at Wolves away um, early on in the season. Um, so these games, these games we should have won, um, obviously, obviously, you know, where cost us our points, um, you know, to be um, quite um, honest with you. Uh, but um, regarding uh, the direct um, of football, um, as they have been um, updating you uh, quite uh, recently about that, um, there's actually you know quite a few names that have been mentioned who could who could become could become Manchester United's uh, you know new uh, technical uh, director. Um, obviously, as I uh, recently um, updated you um, on. Uh, well, this was one there mentioned, uh, Ralph Rangnick, who's currently head of uh, head of uh, sport and development um, at Red Bull. Um, he said reportedly recently that Man United um, had travelled to Germany to meet up with Ralph Rangnick. Um, Ed Woodward um, had scheduled uh, the meeting because obviously Ed Woodward um, is looking, you know, to uh, recruit um, a new uh, director in football. And I did quote out that's one of the structural changes, you know, that we do uh, need to uh, see um, at the football club. Um, That's one of the structural changes that um, we do uh, need to uh, see. Um, the football club is getting um, a new uh, director um, of football in. Um, obviously, during the course of the summer, there was quite a few former Man United players uh, linked uh, with a role. You know, talks of Fernand coming in, uh, you know, Darren Fletcher, Patrice Ever and that. But I did say if we are to recommend one in, you know, it would be, you know, beneficial to recommend someone who knows the traditions of the club, someone who obviously, you know, would be reliable to obviously our transfer business and someone who who's got who's got the right philosophy for the club so obviously they can bring the right caliber players to Manchester United and that there was speculation don't forget um, about um, Edwin uh, van der Sar uh, the other week um, but I think actually you know, Ralph Ragnick's not only been linked with a vacant director's role I think there's also been speculation about him possibly replacing Solskjaer uh, at Man United but I don't really know much about him I know he's what 61 years of age he managed various German clubs you know during his managerial career and that um but um yeah, there has uh, been uh, talks um, about um him and that. But it was a shame during the summer that we didn't uh, get um, a new uh, director um, of football in. Um, but yeah, and obviously you know there's you know been quite a few managers um on our um, agenda you know who actually you know could uh, replace uh, Solskjaer um, at the football club. Uh, obviously you know you've. You know, there's been a lot of speculation about uh, Max Allegri. You know, uh, going on uh, quite uh, recently. Um, you know, and I think Max Allegri, you know, has actually you know, been linked to a few uh, managerial, you know, roles. You know, he's obviously managerless at the moment. You know, he resigned as Juventus manager um, at the end um, of last season. Obviously, you know, he enjoyed um, a five-year uh, tenure uh, with Juventus. Um, obviously, he progressed them to two Champions League finals. Obviously, won the vast majority of his suit where there. Um, and now, obviously, he's linked with a job at Man United. He's, I think he's been linked with a job at Arsenal because the own Ryan Ray is under pressure at Arsenal. Um... I think he's also linked with a uh, vacant managerial role at Bayern Munich because don't forget quite recently Bayern Munich had sat to Nick Orkovic following their fi- following their uh, five one uh, you know defeat uh, to uh, Frankfurt. Uh, so Bayern Munich are obviously you know looking to recommend um, a new uh, manager um, in. But do you think you know Max Allegri you know, would be uh, the right uh, candidate uh, for uh, Manchester United? Do you think he would be? Um, you know, do you think um, he would be? Um, you know, obviously he's recently been learning English um, in preparation uh, for his uh, potential move. Um, obviously, so far he spent the entirety of his managerial career um, in Italy, in the Serie A. Um, obviously, he started off, you know, managing small, various Italian clubs and obviously not emulated um, himself um, up. He did say, uh, I think during the international break, uh, that, you know, Max Allegri was in discussions with Manchester United, you know, he was in discussions there uh, with Manchester United, you know, regarding, you know, his salary, you know, what he would earn if he was to take the mantle on the club. He also did assure a few things that he wanted to recommend Patrice Everin as one of his coaching staff. Um, he also wanted to, you know, bring Mario Mandzukic and Emre Chan uh, with him to the football club. Uh, but I don't think he'll come in as yet anywhere because I think we'll stick with Oleg and Solskjaer uh, for uh, this uh, present uh, time. Uh, but at some point in the future, uh, he actually, you know, uh, could uh, come in, uh, Max Allegri. So I don't think he's no longer the club's primary 
candid, primary candidate, you know, like he was, I think, you know, about two or three weeks ago now, uh, at least. But yeah, there's still a lot of talks about him going on. Uh, Mauricio Pochettino, I think um, he's um, another uh, manager um, on our um, agenda. Well, don't forget after the sack after the sacking um, of Jose Mourinho um, in December um, of last year. Um, obviously, you know there was quite a few managers on our agenda, but uh, Mauricio Pochettino uh, was our uh, top uh, priority. Um, he was our uh, top uh, priority, but at the time when in for him, he was reluctant to leave Tottenham, and like I added into the equation, uh, Daniel Lever um, is a hard uh, negotiator when it comes to teams trying to get the pursuit of any of their players or get any anything to do with Tottenham he's a hard uh, negotiator he's Daniel Lee and he's very very stubborn um you know um but Pochettino's obviously you know undoing their tense uh, pressure uh you know uh, with Tottenham basically because they've enjoyed them um, really a uh, bad uh, start uh, to the season um but if we are to you know go in for him you know we'd probably have to pay a Com 32 million in compensation despite the fact that he hasn't got a release clause in this contract because Pochettino's got a long-term contract with Tottenham he signed a five-year contract I think in the summer of 2018 um, but he's done really really well with Tottenham mainly you know he's good at developing young players and that um, he's enjoyed a bad time this season but prior to that I think you know he has uh, done uh, really really well Plus, he's Premier League proven his Pochettino. Um, you know, my other element of concern I've got about him is that obviously, you know, he hasn't won our worm um, in terms um, of silverware. Uh, but yeah, he's another uh, manager um, on our um, current um, agenda. Uh, but, you know, I think, you know, the only reason we're sticking with Solskjaer um, at this uh, present uh, time is prob prob probably because, you know, He's a club legend, and in that aspect, uh, the board and that um, are soft in their stands, and so to Ed Woodward is. And you know, disregarding him being a club legend or being, you know, if it had been another manager, then maybe you know they would have uh, been uh, sat uh, by now. But I do feel sorry for him in a way because I think the club um, have put him in um, a very, very difficult position. I think you know we shouldn't have ever given him uh, the job. I think that's one of the one of the mistakes that Man United did make was giving him the job permanently and that. Um, but we've actually you know made several mistakes anywhere um, in the last uh, six. Uh, Mara seven or eight years, um, you know, and uh, and you know, Solskjaer um, is our uh, fourth uh, permanent manager. Uh, since uh, the Alex uh, Ferguson um, era and I did as you say you know we haven't really got the structure to keep sacking managers you know we haven't you know we're not really known for the sacking football club but we've already sat to uh, three managers since the Ferguson era you know David Moyes left after 10 months obviously you know he had a really really short tenure with the football club he took the man flan at Man United because obviously uh, Ferguson recommended him Moyes in um, after his uh, retirement and that was the one mistake Ferguson made and it was the only mistake you know where Ferguson you know, where did make um, and obviously Louis van Gaal lasted like a year and a half at the club uh, something like that I think um, you know he got sats despite the fact he won the FA Cup and then obviously we got Jose Mourinho in after you know Louis van Gaal and he had he enjoyed the two and a half year tenure at Manchester United you know Mourinho, you know, spent a substantial amount of the club. Like I said earlier on, the vast majority of this team is Jose Mourinho's. Um, he obviously won the Europa League and the League Cup in his first season there with Man United and that. Uh, we should have arguably got Mourinho in at an earlier point. Uh, if we got him in at an earlier time, then I think, you know, it could have been a different scenario uh, with Manchester United because um, obviously Mourinho recently as well has been linked with a, you know, a new uh, managerial role at Arsenal. Uh, there's been talks about it that he could possibly, you know, replace Umray Emre. Reports emerged down not too long ago saying that, you know, he'd, uh, a meeting had been scheduled and he, you know, had a meeting and that, you know, with uh, Arsenal's head of football did Jose Mourinho. And I think if he got given the opportunity, you know, Jose Mourinho, you know, would take over him at Arsenal. You know, he wouldn't come back to Man United. You know, even if Solskjaer, you know, did uh, get uh, sacked. Uh, but Mourinho's obviously got that like, proven pedigree. He's still regarded as one of the best managers in the world. He's won 25 major honours so far uh, during um, his managerial uh, career as Mourinho. You know, like I mentioned, he's won the Champions League twice, once with Porto, once with um, Porto, and I think once with um, Inter Milan. Um, you know, he won, um, you know, the Premier League about three times, something with Chelsea and that. Um, but, um, yeah, he wouldn't uh, come back to Man United. But I already give you the variety of reasons, you know, why his, uh, you know, tenure didn't work out for him um, at Manchester United, you know, Jose Mourinho's. And, you know, he had bad disputes with the board and bad disputes with the top players. You know, he, obviously the board went back in the signs that I wanted to recommend in uh, to the football club last summer. So these are the reasons why it didn't uh, work out um, under uh, Jose Mourinho. Um, 
But um, yeah, but you know, we're never ever going to be the team that we was under Alex Ferguson. You know, regardless of who our manager is, I can definitely assure that Solskjaer uh, can't invoke Ferguson's legacy uh, to save him um, at Manchester United. You know, we can, you know, obviously, you know, uh, confirm that. Um, but um, yeah, guys, and that's mainly everything to today. So. I just wanted to do this video basically, you know, just to give you my perceptions more on what, you know, with Manchester United and that. And I think, you know, we need to see a variety of chains. Like I said, the board needs, this current board needs to go. Ed Woodward needs to go. Uh, Solskjaer needs to go. Uh, so, yeah. And I think, you know, definitely, you know, uh, more uh, players uh, do uh, need to uh, leave uh, the football club. Um, that, you know, that's just how it is basically so anyway guys drop your coins likes below on the channel if you do consider a subscribe um, as always and take care god bless and i'll see you all again very very soon thanks for watching